All right, welcome to Tori Flanders 2021 preview. I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to give you the facts. I'm going to give you the course. I'm going to give you the riders. I'm going to tell you who's going to win. And it's probably going to be right, knowing my predictions in the past. So first of all, we're going to go through the men's, then the women's afterwards. So parkour for the men, 260K or something like that. Pretty big day out. Starts in Antwerp, finishes in Udenard. First 100, 100 kilometers or so, pan flat just for the break and get the Ks up so they get a bit knackered before the final. Uh, there's two main loops, basically. There's the one round uh, near Gerardsbergen, which sometimes can go. 2017, I believe, uh, was the main attack uh, where it forced a big split. Quick step, a lot of riders in there. Ineos had, or Sky back then had quite a lot of riders. Um, and then Gilbert went over the top and won it. But realistically, the main point that there are a lot of, like, you know, the main deciding uh, breaks are all made or splits are made is after the first descent of the Quermont at 212 kilometers in. So you've got, if you look at here, you've got the, on the right hand side, we've got the 10 and 11, and they all correspond to the loops over here. Uh, so you have the Quermont and the Paxburg, they're all pretty close. Quermont's in like 5%, not too, not too steep. Um, so Pem Quermont, Paxburg, Koppenberg, Stenbeck and Dries and Tyneberg is where early breaks can go. Often people, you know, send out flyers earlier I don't know, there'll be like a group of three or four. Van Baal's gone quite often. Uh, but the main, the main moves are normally after the time, but Koisberg, Quermont, Paterberg, when people really start to go from the Paterberg, there's only about 8K or so uh, to the finish in Udenard at 267 kilometers to go. So maybe a bit more than that, 13 kilometers actually. Um, can't really do too much maths. But Quermont, Paterberg combo is pretty hard. So anyway, those are the, that's the time to watch out. Basically, don't watch the beginning bit if you value your time. For me, I don't really care. It's so probably watch the whole thing. My favorites. Now, Obviously, it's quite obvious who they really are going to be, isn't it? Uh, Van Aert, Alaphilippe, and Van der Poel went solo last time, and then a motorbike ended the three of their breaks. I made a video about that. You probably saw it because it was quite, quite popular. Stoyven won San Remo. Big favourite for me. Greg Van Avermaet, you might say, why you pick him? It's not really him. It's his team. I think I couldn't see, but if Jungles is going, they've got a real good team. Nice and Jungles and uh, Van Avermaet. I'm not sure if he is going because the start list isn't out yet, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I think there are a couple others who we're going to mention in a minute, but these are the main people, I think, who have a chance of actually winning it, not just getting a top position. Now, we're going to go with the recent results. I, I put in Umlup, don't think it was too, really, didn't show much, just because it was so easy, um, like, you know, what, 30, 40 people got to the end. Kerner Brussels Kerner is also a different race, it's very flat at the end, uh, it's more like E3, where, you know, it's, it's hard, but then there's a flat part. But having said that, you'll see some of the names prop up quite a lot, like Matteo Trentin, uh, Niels Pollard as well, um, he hasn't been able to race because uh, his teammate got corona, uh, so he was banned from racing, which is a bit rude. Um, and Van der Poel, um, obviously still popping up in a lot of those. Uh, Milan San Remo, I didn't include Strada because I just thought it wasn't really representative of Cobble Classics, and you might say San Remo isn't either, but people who do well in San Remo often do well in Flanders or Roubaix, so I decided that it was time to pick, time to see who had done consistently well. Michael Matthews looked good there, also looked good in Ghent as well, so I think it's, it's worth having a look. Soren Craig Anderson as well has looked pretty strong. So I wouldn't, wouldn't say, you know, they're like favourites, but they're not going to win it, are they? That's the thing. And obviously one man I've forgotten is Peter Sagan. You might say, why have you forgotten him? Okay, he's only won Flanders once, but he's a bit of a legend. Uh, the reason I've forgotten him is, basically, I don't think he's good enough to climb with Alaphilippe, Van der Poel or Van Aert. So he then needs it to come down to an easier race, right? I still don't think he's going to beat Van Aert or Van der Poel in a sprint after 255k. I just haven't seen it. Like, okay, in Catalonia, he did win the sprint, but it wasn't by much, and I didn't really think he had much of a chance. Um, Trentin looks all right, Colbrelli, Stefan Kung again, but, like, Kung like, has Jake Stewart and Demar, but will they get round? I'm not so sure. So it's going to be hard for them. Uh, Tish Benu, top 15 in E3, but, again, I don't think so. Marcus Hulgaard, big shout. He's a huge legend. I love the man, and I think he could go well. So most likely outcome, these three whack it up after the Timeberg, similar time to what they did before. Maybe leave it to the Paterberg, um, and then they'll go up the Quermont, go up the Passberg. Alaphilippe will probably try and attack them, because he knows he's probably got worse sprint. Probably won't get away, and then one of the, the two, Van der Poel or Van Aert, will win the sprint. That's my prediction. And head-to-head, -head, I, th I think Van Aert could have it this time. But I said that last time, he didn't have it, so we don't know. Anyway, women's race, basically the same finale, just less messing around on the flats, because they don't need to do that, because their racing is exciting without having 260 kilometers, which is good. Uh, so pretty much the same things to watch out with. They do the Canary Berg, which the, men, the men's don't do, but basically after the Muir, they do Canary Berg, Timeberg, Kreuzberg, Quermont, Paterberg. So 
same very ending and again pretty similar results watch out after the Titanberg that's the attacks are going to go women's favorites uh it's been a bit better this year to be honest uh van bluten hasn't been in top condition so we haven't just seen her winning every race Van der Bregen was very dominant in Omblet Hackney's bar. Marion Voss was quite dominant in E3, but she did have a good teammate, Anna Henderson. Um, then we've got Lottie Kopecky as well. She's had some real solid results, just like um, she won less than man and then also has just come like top three, top four in a lot of them. And Lizzie Diagnon, well, I just had to put her in because she's British, isn't it? So I reckon she could go all right. She hasn't shown great form, but Trek also is a unit like Ella Van Dyke won the Healthy Aging Tour as well. So I think all in all, there's probably a decent chance they're going to do quite well. If we look at the recent results, uh, Omelette, uh, Anna van der Breggen won that quite convincingly. She whacked it solo and is looking really good. Uh, Emma Norsgaard, I, I rate a lot. I think she's really good. I'm not sure she's got enough to win. Um, you can see here she did win. Uh, well, she won the bunch sprint in E3 ahead of Gillian Dore and Lottie Kopecky again. Uh, but Grace Brown was off the front. They, Michigan also have a decent team. Grace Brown, Tenniel Scott, they look quite good. What was it? Ten yeah, Tenniel Scott, I think it is. can't remember exactly. She, she's quite good as well. Um... Apart from that, Amy Peters, again, like SD Works just have the best team um, with Julian Dore and then Van der Bregen and Amy Peters. It's just quite harsh. Uh, and then you can see uh, in Gem, where will Gem on the right hand side, Marion Avos won that ahead of Lottie Kopecky, Lisa Brenauer. But having said that, I don't think many of them is going to get round. Emma Norsgaard wasn't as strong in that sprint, but I guess it was more like pure bunch sprinters who managed to get round that. Like there's no way Lisa Brenauer is going to get round Tour of Flanders um, in a lead group, realistically. She probably will now. Uh, but anyway, and then Diagnon again 17th. So maybe, maybe, but it's unlikely. Most likely outcome, Van der Breggen whacks it solo with about 30k to go uh, and pretty much potentially on a TT bike and everyone will just be like, all right, she's going to win it. We'll just go for a second. That's what I think is going to happen. Van Bluten hasn't looked that good, to be honest, recently, um, but she hasn't raised too much either. So yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, Van der Breggen is going to take the W uh, for in the women's race. And that'll be that. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video about the Tour of Flanders. Uh, if you've got your predictions, obviously leave them below because we need to have a need to you need to put your put your pick down below so we can see who's right. Who knows what things about cycling and who just is absolutely chatting? Because generally, for me, it's 50-50 with me. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes just get it horrendously wrong. But anyway, that's it from me. Tour of Flanders on Sunday. Whack it on Eurosport. 200k to go if you're well hard. If not, just watch the last 50k as we said before. And all will be good. So we'll see you in the next one.